Thank you, Senator Reid. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hagel, thank you for remaining uh, through what has been a very long hearing. Uh, I'd like to ask some additional questions sure. to further explore your positions and your record uh, and, and begin with asking, are, are you familiar with an individual uh, named Chaz Freeman? Yes, yes. Uh, he, he was, if I understand correctly, a vice chairman at the Atlantic Council, is that correct? Uh, when I became chairman of the Atlantic Council, uh, after I left the Senate to replace General Jim Jones. Uh, he was one of many board members and I think was a vice chairman, but I, I never really worked with him uh, in the Atlantic Council, but I know him, yes. And, and you and he uh, were, were part of a group that traveled last year to China together. Is that, is that correct as well? No, that's not correct. Okay, there, there had been press reports to that, to that effect. Well, those press uh, reports are incorrect. Okay. I've never been on any trip with Chaz Freeman. Right. There, there have also been press reports that has described Mr. Freeman as, as uh, helping coordinate efforts to, to defend your nomination. Uh, is, is that an accurate characterization? Uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't spoken with Chaz Freeman in years. Okay. It, so I don't know of any activity that he's involved in to endorse me or a lot of people I appreciate our endorsing me and supporting me, uh, but uh, I haven't talked to Chaz Freeman in years. Uh, is he someone whose, whose judgment you respect? I think Chaz Freeman has, has been uh, an important public servant if, uh, for this country. Um, there are a lot of different opinions uh, that people have on different issues. Um, I don't agree with everybody, and um, uh, it, it's pretty clear everybody didn't agree with me. So uh, that's okay. Do you consider his views well within the mainstream? Well, what views are you speaking about, Senator? Uh, his, his views on the Middle East and on the nation of Israel. Well, I'm not actually fam that familiar with all of his views. Uh, well, I, I, I can't speak for Chaz Freeman. Uh, all right, well, let's move on to your record then. Uh, and you stated in your prepared remarks, quote, my overall worldview has never changed. Uh, I have to admit I find that difficult to reconcile. Uh, with statements and positions you've taken for over a decade and, and what seems to me a fairly significant shift since you've been nominated for Secretary of Defense. So what I'd like to do is go through some past statements, past positions of yours, and just clarify if you agree with them or not. Okay. Uh, beginning with number one. 2001, you voted against legislation sanctioning Iran. Now, am I correct? You no longer agree with that position. You think sanctions against Iran are, are a good policy today. Uh, I uh, have said, on the record, uh, multilateral international sanctions. Do you uh, agree with affected. sanctions against Iran? I'm sorry? D do you think sanctions against Iran are a good idea today? Yes, yes. Yes, yes I always have. So it's, it's, it's fair. I'm trying to characterize yes. your, I'm trying to understand your views and characterize them fairly. It's fair to say you, you no longer agree with the position in 2001 that we should not be sanctioning Iran. That was a unilateral uh, sanction. Uh, and the so Bush administration... Today, do you think unilateral sanctions are a bad idea? Well, it's a different time now because we now have international sanctions on. I've supported the Senator President's Hagel, position. please answer the question I asked. Today, do you think unilateral sanctions would be a bad idea? Not today. Uh, okay. Twelve years later. So, you, so that is not a view because you Because times with have changed, we now have international sanctions on them. Okay. The second slide. In 2007... You voted against legislation designating the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist group. That's correct. You no longer agree with that policy. Today, you, your position is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a terrorist group. Is that correct? The Revolutionary Guard is part of the Iranian government. The reason it, I voted is, against... Sir, I'm, I'm not asking the reason. I'm asking for your views today. Do you believe the Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a terrorist group? Yes or no? It is part of a, a state sponsor of terrorism, so it's part of, of Iran, which I've said is a sponsor of state terrorism. D does that, is that a yes? That, that vote wasn't that question. That, I, that I'm asking vote your, gave... your views today. Do you believe the Iranian Revolutionary National Guard is a terrorist group? It is part of a terrorist, uh, uh, it is part of a government that supports terrorism. I, I, is that a yes or a no? It's the answer I just gave you. All right, we'll move on to the next one. 2008, you also voted against comprehensive Iran sanctions. We've already discussed that today you agree with sanctions, so, so that is another that, position. That, again, was a unilateral sanction that the Bush administration was opposed to. And the Secretary of State of this country, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, uh, sir, sir, I, wrote that. 
And I, and my, I, my time is limited. I understand that you want to give reasons for the past positions. We've discussed the reasons. I'm simply trying to clarify your positions today. If you look at number four, in 2010, you stated you're not sure it's necessary to keep all options on the table with regard to Iran's nuclear program. Do you agree with that position today, or is that no longer your position? I don't, re I don't recall that. I have always said that all options remain on the table. I, I don't recall that uh, speech. So this is not your position today? I'm just trying to understand. No, it's not. Today. No, I've said that all options must remain on the table, including, in, in fact, in an op-ed I wrote with two cent former CENTCOM commanders last year. And, and the final one I'm going to ask you, in a 1998 Senate hearing, you stated that the U.S. has, quote, tilted too far towards Israel in the Middle East peace process. Do you continue to agree with this position, or is that no longer your position today? I don't remember that, the context of, of the, the hearing or the speech or the, all the things I said in it. Uh, uh, no, I, I, I don't think the United States has tilted too far to Israel. To, I support the president's position as Israel. I've said in my book and uh, other speeches that so, so you do not agree with So you do not agree with this policy. I, I will point out that I have a list of... Ten other statements in the past, which I'm pretty confident if I asked you, you would say you do not agree with, and they're all statements and quotes from you. Uh, in my judgment, your record as a United States senator, and you, and you and I don't know each other. We do not have a personal relationship, but I think your record and your past statements as a United States senator demonstrate greater antagonism for the nation of Israel than any member of this body, and also demonstrate a greater willingness to stand against sanctions, stand against military action, stand against any strong position against Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, terrorists. And that ultimately is why the Washington Post described your foreign policy views as, quote, near the fringe of the Senate. And that raises, I think, very serious questions about your suitability to serve as the Secretary of Defense. In my view, having a Secretary of Defense who is not viewed as supporting credible, strong military action makes it more likely the United States will be drawn into military conflict, and I think that would be a very unfortunate outcome. 